Okay, so uh, hello everyone. We have a different setup for tonight. So this is going to be part one of a two-part series uh, in the discussion of gender representation and Philippine photography. Okay, just a run through of the topic. In July 2021, the topic of gender in relation to Philippine photography exploded when a camera brand announced an all-male lineup for their brand ambassador program. There were many ways on how it was seen by the public, but cheaply summarized, it was seen as a typification of the persistence of a long-standing gender bias present in Philippine photography. And also, in opposition, it was seen as a showcase of wokeism and misandry, or an issue created for clout. A similar concern resurfaced in January 2023, when the same label was used to describe a big industry event which had an all-male speaker lineup. However, this did not have the same response from the community and for various reasons, many were reluctant to see this as a repeat of the 2021 issue. Photography Chismis PH and the participants for this topic have decided to break it into two episodes. First will be a qualitative lecture on the broad aspect of gender and the historical, ethnographic, and aesthetic contexts where the issue stems out of in Philippine photography. The second part will be an open discussion with some of the members of the photography community who are vocal about this issue. For tonight, we will endeavor on giving some context on the concept of gender and its relationship with photography in the Philippines. So, if you are new to this podcast, this is Photography Chismis PH. Our goal is to contribute meaningfully to the discussion of photography in the Philippines. My name is Anthony Cuesta. Okay, some, some reminders. This is going to be a recorded Zoom session. You will be prompted by Zoom for your consent in the recording of this material. The recording shall be uploaded in Photography Chismis PH and its various platforms such as, but it's not limited to Facebook. YouTube, and Spotify for educational purposes in the aim of contributing to the discourse of photography in the Philippines. Third, this episode of the Quentuan session shall not be monetized. Derived knowledge from this program should be cited accordingly based on the conventions and laws on intellectual property in the Philippines as applicable. Then last, this Quentuan session is an informal discussion and it's not a lecture, but uh, since the setup is different, this is going to be a lecture. Comments and questions shall be recognized accordingly by the host and the moderator as applicable. So just some plugging. So the home of photography GSP's PH, as mentioned, is in Facebook. That is where the, the, that's where we host everything from writing to news to analysis to books and other references. And the Quentuan session, which is the audiovisual component of photography GSP's PH, or in other words, the lecture recordings and the, and the podcasts are available on Spotify, YouTube, and Apple Podcast. And recently, we have started our IG as well. So uh, we're currently populating that, that, you know, that, that page. That will, uh, that will focus on the image component of Photography Chismis page and the short-form content. Okay, so this is going to be a first time. So we're, we're, we, have, we have a disclaimer. Uh, we have disclaimers for this episode. And I think this is very important. Okay, so number one. So I would like to clarify and emphasize that this is not a gender sensitivity class. So I am not a philosophy professor. Usually gender discussions and gender studies are held by philosophy professors. But I do have some background on this topic through formal education, as well as almost two decades of encounter with this topic as I have been part of the community for around, around 18, 18 to 20 years. So given that, I would still emphasize that I am not an expert on gender studies. However, I teach photography theory in college. So that's my angle. So that's where I'm coming from. Okay, next. So this is not a full critique of gender representation in the discourse of Philippine photography, which includes theory and practice. 
if in case that my co-faculty or other instructors of photography would see this, I would agree with you that there might be areas that need further studies. There will be areas, I think, that needs further substantiation. But in case you would like to do that for us, should you have comments, clarifications, extensions, and even disagreements to the content of this episode, we have we can dedicate an entire episode for you. So we have a section in Photography Chismis called Counterpoints. So the reason for us having counterpoints is that we would like to encourage conversations about Philippine photography. We also do understand that there will be disagreements and these agreements would cause friction in the committee. Well, possibly. possibly. What we don't spouse for is that the disagreements become reasons for division. So the goal of photography trees, Ms. P.H., kung merong pagtatalo, let's use that pagtatalo to contribute more to the discourse of Philippine photography. So that's that's our belief. So so yun. so if so if in case anyone would like to do a counterpoint episode, we can give you an episode. Okay. Next, the method to be used in this sharing or in this uh, presentation is thematic analysis in reference to critical theory. Just to give you an idea for those who are not familiar with critical theory, the idea is that if you're going to assess, analyze, evaluate, quote-unquote, critique, then you can focus on four things. Basic to, kasi it, it can be more expansive. It can go up to 15 areas. But there is always a focus on the agency. So in different discourses, if you're from literature, you call this the writer, the author, diba? If you're a photographer, you call this the photograph. And then if you're from art, uh, for, from the art field, you call this the artist. Diba? So the agency basically is the entity from where the meaning emanates from. So the one who creates, quote unquote, the art object. Art object kung, kung, ano ka, kung, kung artist ka. Pero kung writer ka, it's the work. It's the written work. Either a poem or a, a literature. No? So that's the agency. And since you're doing that, when you critique, you have to critique something. There should be an object of critique. So therefore, another area of evaluation should be the output. So if you say that this, there's something wrong with this work, then what's the work? Show me the work. So in critical theory, uh, uh, there is an emphasis also on the output, obviously, aside from the one creating it, kasi magiging ad hominem tayo pag ganun, di ba? So we have to focus also on the work. So um, if you're a photographer, it's the photograph or the photographic image. If you're an artist, you call it the art object, yun yung mga terminology sa art criticism. It, if you're an archaeologist, it could be the artifact, di ba? Or historian ka, it's, you call it the artifact. And if you're in music, it, it could be the musical piece, di ba? So, or in literature, you call it the, the you, you call it the work itself, the, the written work. The next area that is important in critical theory would be the viewer. So, in literature, this is called uh, the reader response theory. So the idea behind this is that in traditional or in classical criticism, the emphasis is on the agent creating the object. Meaning, uh, if it's going to be a book or a novel, the basis of meaning is usually assigned to the intentions of the agent or the author. However, in contemporary analysis, there is not necessarily a shift, but an, an increased or an elevation on the status of a reader or the audience or a viewer to be a creator of meaning as well. So that's the that's the reason that uh, in, in, in critical theory, now we have uh, an elevation on the status of the reader as a creator of meaning. 
And uh, lastly, uh, the agent or the creator, the output, which is the creation, and the viewer, which is the observer or the audience, has to have a space wherein they can coalesce, interact, and for the purpose of definition or at least description, we can call that as context. Uh, but to clarify, if you go to critical theory, the context is a, a more wide, wide ranging and very highly gradiated area. So you can have context as in historical context, you can have ge uh, geographical context, you have psychological context, uh, it can be something uh, aesthetic context, it can also be uh, biological or scientific context. So, for the purpose or for the purpose of the disclaimer, I'm just calling it context. So, yeah. So for now, we'll just limit it to that. So at least I, I'm 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 giving time in 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 explaining this because at for for the purpose of this presentation, having credibility or at least a a, a level of acceptability i have i have to make this clear now okay so next okay full disclosure i do not speak for the brand which i have been part of for 12 years i love that brand i still love that brand just to clarify now so i do not i'm not doing this in opposition to that brand i to a certain extent i hope i was able to help grow that brand so in, in terms of what is official or, or what is public information, the official statement has been released in 2021. So I cannot add on that. So therefore, whatever I'm saying, my views, comments, and interpretation, is not a statement from the brand. This is a, a statement from me. And to be fair, or also to be rational about this, I have to specify that whatever I'm going to say here is of public record. So it's public information. Or at least I will comment on what is public. I will try my best not to speculate what happened behind the scenes. So whether I admit it or not, I do have some speculations what happened behind the scenes. But nevertheless, I try to veer away from that because again, that would be speculative. And therefore, that will be unfair for the brand. So, you know, so, you know, clarification. so everything that I say is based on me. And also, I would like to clarify that currently I'm a teacher in college. So I do not speak for that college or the point of view of that college. I speak for I speak in this presentation as Anthony Cuesta from Photography Cheese Miss PH. And number five. So this sharing does not intend to valorize nor vilify an any ideology, group, individual, entity, activity, or understanding. That is beyond the scope of existing frameworks of analysis, which has been grounded on academic, rational, and critical conventions. So this is a further emphasis on the idea that I will do my best to be neutral, but neutral to the extent that existing frameworks of critical utterances can be said. So the ultimate goal of the lecture is to provide context to the open discussions on April 28th. Important in yung six, because it summarizes why, or at least the, the level of status or the boundaries or the scope of this presentation. So again, as mentioned a while ago, I am not an expert. The experts will come in on April 28th. So we have Estra, Sandra, and Pau, who, which we will, we will have a discussion, an open discussion about this topic. However, since that's going to be parang ano, that requires a certain foundations na pag pumasok ka dun sa conversation na yun, hindi yung tipong totally blank slate ka na wala kang background on gender. So I'm, we are doing this. We decided to have this episode para at least may common terminologies, may common con conventions, or at least may understood conventions, may frameworks, wherein when we go to April 28th, we will not be defining things there anymore. Siguro we will. But nevertheless, the basic foundational ideas are going to be discussed here or shown here. So if there is a limitation to the presentation what I'm that, that I'm going to do, it is bound by the idea that it is a preparatory session for April 28th. Yeah. So you might have noticed 
that in my slides nawala na yung sausage fest pero in the invitation the 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 phrase was there no so bakit nga ba at saka bakit nga ba sausage fest so when you hear the term or at least the phrase sausage fest meron ng it's a colloquial term and that that term conjures some connotations no uh and gender we can even say that it the 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 connotations is a gendered connotation and in that same token why i'm using this or we, why we use this in the in the invitations is that it was used in relation to this discussion of gender it was used by someone in the community to refer to an event that has something to do with gender so what i'm showing you right now is obviously everyone knows everyone knows Ezra. So Ezra posted this, uh, nakasulat naman dyan, so in July 20, 2021. This is his response to the announcement of a brand about a relaunch or a grand relaunch of their a brand ambassador program. So uh, there, was a, there was a time that naglilo yung brand ambassador program because of many reasons. So around four to five years, medyo quiet. At least we were, we, were, we were using the term brand ambassadors, pero medyo lilo. So when it get when it got relaunched in 2021, it was packaged as something that, that is big. And then when it came out, it was all male. And you have Ezra. He commented that it was a sausage fest. So that's where the sausage fest came into public consciousness. <laughs> and then that same term resurfaced in 2023. So this year lang. When Ezra also commented on an all male list, uh, all male speaker list by a big industry event. Yeah, Sausage Fest 2023. So loaded yung 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 phrase na yun, no? So I'm just giving context for those who are unaware. And ang ang ano lang, ang interesting lang kasi yung kinomenta ni Ezra na 2023 Sausage Fest. I was I was part of that speaker list, no? So I was we were all male. So yung interesting lang kasama ako sa dinidiscuss ko. Okay. Unahan ko na kayo kasi probably some would ask why discuss this topic? And why now? So, as mentioned a while ago, the intention is not to valorize or vilify. But, the intention is to have a rational discussion of gender in relation to, so as you will see here in the slide, no? and one of the claims that I do in class and also the, the, the claim that I I do in photography chismis is to emphasize that photography, contemporary photography has ceased to be the domain purely of photographers. It has became, become the domain of human experience. And specifically, since we're talking about Philippine photography, so it's Philippine human experience. So if you believe that photography is important, and then you also believe that gender is important, and gender is has a uh, has an intrinsic relationship to Philippine human experience, if you think that is it matters, then eventually being in the context of what is Philippine, Philippine or Philippine, well, what is Philippine or what is Filipino, hindi mo may iwasan na magkakaroon na intersection yung dalawang discourses na yan, gender and photography. To contextualize this discussion, we're also emphasizing that the manner wherein these two discourses intersect is a bit different in contemporary discussions. So, therefore, if you're going to ask, why are we doing this? So, the idea here is that this discussion is just an extension of what I do in college. This is part of the classroom discussion that I do in teaching photography theory, wherein we try to understand or be conscious of that intersection between photography and gender. So 
let's say hindi ako part ng ng isang school, I would still be doing this because I have photography chismis. And the goal of photography chismis is to add to the discourse of Philippine photography. So, hindi siya may iwasan. Yung timing, I'm not sure kung may question on the timing. Kasi yun yung, yun yung pinagagalingan natin. The goal of this discussion is that it's part of what I do. The part of what I want to do, which is to to you know, to to you know, to open discussions of photography that intersects other human experiences. So, yun. so yun yung yun yung yun yung point niya. Okay, see. Okay, now so now we got with all those disclaimers. Now, basic question. So what what is gender, diba? So. It, there's no easy way. There's no easy answer. So if if you ask the question, what is gender? There is no easy answer. So what I'm going to give you first is not a definition, but a description of what is gender. So gender is an intersectional discourse on identity, functionalism, semiotics, and dialectics. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Well, let's discuss first intersectionality. Intersectionality is the idea that a topic is complex, layered, and multidimensional. So basically, pag sinabi natin na intersection, it the gender as a concept is not just one thing. It's composed of many things. And if you go back, if you if you decide to try to understand gender, you will see that it is connected or it has roots in philosophy. It has roots in political theory. It has roots in biology, obviously. It has roots in psychology, and it has roots in semiotics. Again, uh hindi to na pag usapan in public as much. That is the reason we're doing this, no. Pero just to emphasize that gender is not necessarily just one thing. So that is not a definition, that is a description. So that's why I'm just emphasizing that it's intersectional. It is comprised of different fields of discourses intersecting. Okay, next. <laughs> but there is no way around it. I have to define it because I cannot do a presentation without a definition. So here, uh, it, with, uh, with the risk of being reductive, I'm going to give an idea or we're going to de define gender as the set of social, psychological characteristics that a society considers proper for its males and females. So again, as a as a disclaimer, that this 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 is there is a risk of this definition being reductive. However, for the purpose of coming up with a working definition. I think this would suffice at least up to this point of the discussion. Kasi pag pumasok na yung performativity, performativity baka magkakaroon ng overlaps lalo. So, so let's go to the idea of considers proper. So let's break it down. So if we say that it, dito sa definition to, if we say considers proper, embedded or inherited to the conversation or the definition of gender is the idea of norm normativity and prescriptiveness. So, ano yung ibig ng normative and prescriptive? The idea is that if you talk about a consideration of what is proper, you are saying that gender assumes a conception of what is dapat and hindi dapat. It has a conception of Pwede sa hindi pwede. And it has a con, or at least, uh, hindi maiiwas sa mapag-usapan din ng naayon sa di naayon. Since we're talking about proper. Pero, if that is the case, then we are saying that there should be a standard to which people would assign what is normal or norm, uh, actually norms. So it, it, is, it talks about norms, kaya siya normative. However, if you say that there is a standard to which people should ascribe to, then therefore it also become prescriptive. Pag sinabi yung prescriptive, yung sabihin nun, kahit na hindi mo, kasi sinabi mo na pwede sa hindi pwede, dapat sa hindi dapat, naayon sa di naayon, then technically, you are also saying that 
if there is a norm and then you do not follow that norm, then therefore you are a deviant. You deviated from that norm. So in the discussion of what is normative, you are also saying that there is also an area wherein you say this is prescribed or you have to follow, kaya prescriptiveness. So given that a discussion of gender has this, this in, 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 uh, inherently in the discussion, there is a normativity and prescriptiveness that is being discussed. These are two different things. However, they're very connected. They're they're related. Uh, they're related very tightly. Okay. So ngayon binaks ko ngayon yung males and females. So uh, when you go to Butler later, it's going to be a bit difficult, because there is a part of her claim that that sex and gender could also be an overlapping concept, no. That's why she came up with performativity. But nevertheless, at least up to this point, there is a discussion or at least an identification of males and females. So what are males and females? So according to this definition, there is a distinction of sex in relation to gender. Gender is something that is a set from the society. But there is a distinction with sex because we have the term males and females. And if we go to the lexicon of gender studies, we say that males and females is a category of description in relation to biology, which includes chromosomes, so yung XY chromosomes, biological and external, uh, internal and bi internal and external biological traits like genitalia, diba? hormonal levels. So these are biological concepts. And therefore, gender studies assumes that there is a distinction between sex, which is biological, and gender, which is, which we'll discuss later. But again, this will become a bit more complicated when we go when we go to performativity. Okay. Next, we go to this this uh, phrases now, a set of social and psychological characteristics. So number one is yung idea of a set. So pag yung set, again, it is a body of standards, a set of claims, at a set of value judgments to which a certain prescription or normative idealization is based on. However, ang important din dito is the identification of what is social and what is psychological. In this conversation, or at least in this part of the definition, it makes a clarification that gender has an inward, inwardly, or internal manifestation, or internal source, but it also has external manifestations that is outwardly, meaning there is gender is a, an intersection of something that is internal to you and it is also a product of what is demonstrated outside you. So it assumes that reality has part that is internal or interior and then there is a reality that is external, exterior, cultural, commun communal, societal. Kaya nga, kaya yun yung distinction between the social and psychological na. And given that, you would see here intersections of internal and external realities usually converge in ideologies, in culture. And if you want to, diyate may iwasan. I will introduce the term dialectic, no? But uh, that's philosophical. But uh, I just have to put it here. The idea here is that. Gender is synthetic. Pag sinabi niya natin synthetic, it's a combination of what is internal realities and what is external realities and they, they converge to a concept we call gender. And therefore, that intersectionality or at least that, that convergence, it creates a dialectic of the idea or it is a synthesis of the internal and the external. And therefore, there is a dialectic happening. Pag sinabi niya natin dialectic is a bit technical term. However, it just means that 
there is a status and then there is a counter status and then there is a product in in you know, in in easy terms or in more conversa con conversational terms we call it the thesis antithesis and synthesis kaya nga at the end we call that we we can say that gender is synthetic because it is it it is a synthesis or it's a convergence of different ideas and in that discussion i just have to clarify that the antithesis doesn't necessarily mean a one to one correspondence or parity to the thesis Kasi if you go to Hegel, which is yung, 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 yung nagpauso, ng, quote unquote, nagpauso ng, ano, ng dialectical method, he is saying, I mean, in German, di, may, nakalimutan ko yung term in German, but to be translated in English, it's subfluation. So, the status and then the counter status, the, the counter status doesn't necessarily mean a one-to-one -one opposition or one-to-one -one parity with, the, ano, with, with, with what is the status. Just to clarify, for those na mga teacher, kasi I have to be conscious na baka may teachers na manunood. No? So in, in Hegelian terms, it's called subfluation. <laughs> so puto pa tayo sa philosophy. Kaya yan, so again, gender is multidisciplinary. It's, it's an intersection of different discourses. And therefore, because of that dialectical aspect of gender, some philosophers, uh, since we're going to discuss Butler later, then therefore... If, if philosopher ang titingin nito, obviously, even Judith Butler says that gender is something ontological. Or actually, siya sabi niya na, it is non-ontological in the sense that there is no essence. But uh, again, this is the area of philosophy. So we're not going to discuss this for now. Pero at least, just to substantiate this basic definition that we have on the screen, yan yung ibig sabihin niyan. So kita nyo, yan palang ang dami ng laman niya, no? Tapos napansin nyo na I did the screen cap. So yung, yung slide na yun has a screen, screen cap. Hindi ko ginawa yan because tamad ako. Uh, if you want to get into gender theory, you can visit this, this channel. Ang, ang title niya is Crash Course. The channel is Crash Course. I'm using this slides or this images because it's they have packaged it easier diba? and concise. However, the reason also that I'm I'm showing this is that Ang difference nito to other crash courses is that the speakers, the texts or references that they use, and uh, even the production team are academics, meaning they are teachers. They are experts. These are experts. So, malalim ang knowledge na. And then, even if you look at this, the video itself is being shot in a university studio. Ano siya, at the heart of this crash course channel is it is based on something academic and credible. So that's why I am open to to to, uh, to recommending this channel. So in case na gusto nyo pang further understanding of, of gender theory, you can go to this. However, kung nagmamadili tayo, and again, this is not a gender sensitivity, sensitivity class. It's, it's actually an intersectional discussion of photography and gender. There is also one reference that you can use para mas parang one-page reference so you can look for this online, so the, the gender bred person. So the good thing about this illustration, this visualization of what is gender, it's very you know it's very easy to understand. It's broken down into simple terms. However, again, just to re remind, gender is not an easy topic to discuss. So part of the ontology or the essence of gender itself is changed, and the flux and the fluidity of it. There is no, I mean, one of the idea of gender studies is that it is not fixed. So therefore, it changes across time. And therefore, you would see here, this is already version four of the gen gender bred person in the sense that there has been multiple versions of this visualization of what is gender. So you can look for this. Uh, you can use this in your classes. If you want to, to introduce gender to other people, you can use this now. And this is being used also by by the LGBTQ community community to to communicate to 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 non-LGBTQ uh persons. So you can you can search for this. Okay. So multiple times we have mentioned the word intersectionality. So I'm going to use this just to emphasize the connection between photography and gender. Okay. When you say intersectionality, it presupposes 
that a topic or any kind of discussion is layered, it's multidimensional, and it is a network of of relationships. It's something complex. So that's a better. I mean, intersection I chose is because magandas din sa pakinggan. So it has its linguistic affectation. It's something that is composed of multiple topics. So. I'm showing this slide because I have to say that the reason also that gender and photography is a loaded conversation because both of them are fluid. Both of, both of them is constantly changing. And pag pinagsama po yung dalawang fluid concepts or subjects, the question is, is there a determination in the, con, con, uh, in the, in the convergence of two indeterminate things? Can there be determination? Uh, medyo academic yung term. No? So, just to give you an idea then bakit I'm using that, that term. So, well, ito, uh, further in the explanation. No? So, yeah, so, so both are indeterminate, meaning, ibig sabihin nun, both are intersectional, intersectional and there is fluidity to both gender and photography as fields of study. And yet, both concepts exhibit valences. Ibig sabihin nun, may value, mayroong meaning, mayroong body of knowledge or methods of discussion built within these two discourses. But if you're asking na where am I getting this idea? So I'm also doing a research about indeterminacy, valences, and synthetic contextuality. So dibs na to dun sa mga kapwa ko teachers no? I'm working on this research. I'm trying to research about this as a context for critic. So artistic critic or photography critic or photography theory. So I'm not going to explain it further. Pag nagawa ko na lang yung paper ko, tsaka ko didiscuss. Kaya, kaya mo pamansin niyo yung mga term ko lang, medyo minsan academic and loaded. Okay, so we go here. So if you've, if, if you've been introduced to the idea of gender, you might have heard the term performative. And performative in itself sort of is a technical term. Loaded yung term na yan. This term came to public knowledge because of Judith Butler. So uh, she came up with a book, Gender Trouble. The, the term performative did not come from Butler herself. So she was influenced by another philosopher the name, uh, by the name of J.L. Austin. So J.L. Austin is a uh, professor of linguistics, I, I think. Uh, he's an American. Uh, he The idea of Austin was that utterances not specifically words but utterances are performative so just to add simon de beauvoir is also one of the uh critical characters in in the discourse of feminism and queer theory uh you, you might have heard the term the other or othering so simon de beauvoir used that term in her in her book the second sex so the idea itself did not come from her so it was uh, it was influenced by Hegel and also yung partner niya si Jean-Paul Sartre so yung ano, nagpasikat ng existentialism uh, nevertheless maganda yung ginawa ni Simone de Beauvoir kasi mas nasubstantiate niya yung concept of the other in, in the book The Second Sex so if you want to read on Simone de Beauvoir you can actually alam ko may Ian Simone Simone yata yan mali yung ano ko sorry nag autocorrect yata yan and then probably if you're been introduced to you know, to gender studies also, you might have heard the term, the, the male gaze. So if you're a professor, obviously you're using this in your classes. Uh, this came from Laura Mulvey. And specifically, it, was, it came from an essay, uh, Visual Pleasure and Narrative Cinema. So I'm saying that also to tie in the idea of photography or the photographic image in relation to cinema. These are brothers. So, yung iba sabihin nila, anak. Yung iba sabihin nila, tatay ang cinema ng photography. Let's not get into that, uh, that, that argument or, or debate. But nevertheless, related na lang ang photography sa cinema. And I can say that nauhuli ang photography theory as compared to cinema theory or film theory. So may uh, entire body of knowledge na about film theory pero photography medyo kulang. No? And the, the term gaze came from Lacan. So Jacques Lacan. And uh, Mulvey also uses 
the framework of Sigmund Freud. So psychoanalysis. Hindi siya psychology itself. It's psychoanalysis. So you can read the essay. Diba? You can look for it. So para lang, para I'm, I'm showing this, baka sabihin nyo, bakit di ko ginamit yung the other or the male gaze. Yan yung mga pinanggalingan yan. And also, uh, we also have Julia Serrano. So ito, maganda yung kay Julia Serrano. So yung, yung model of gender niya is intrinsic inclination model. Uh, and uh, the interesting with Serrano is that she is a transsexual. So she was influenced by Butler, obviously, but she was also critical about Butler. And the foundations of Serrano's critique was not just the philosophical aspects of gender, but also the empirical or scientific conceptions of gender, wherein you can ground the discourse in genetics because Serrano was a geneticist, as far as I understand. So yun, so yun yung ano lang, para, para lang meron tayong area of discussion na Aside from Butler, hindi lang si Butler ang ano ang, ang reference natin. Meron pang iba. So, ito lang, para lang may background tayo. Okay. So, now we go to gender performativity. Medyo... So, ito yung heart nung, ano, heart nung sinasabi ni ni, ano, ni ni Judith Butler. So, when she defined gender, so... Sinabi natin kanina yung gender, no? so may basic definition tayo. When I said na as we go to performativity, it's going to be a bit more layered. Ang sinasabi ni Butler is that gender is a stylized repetition of acts through time. So in other words, if an act occurs multiple times across time and you see it and other people see it, that becomes of your identity. So, ang tanong is, so is it something intrinsic, which is emanating from the inside of the person or the agent? Or is it something constructed outside, so social constructivist, by yung, yung gender? Important dito is yung emphasis on the repetition of acts through time. I will use someone to, to explain it better. No? Yan, so, yan. so, let's have this professor explain to us the definition. So walking in a particular way is a stylized act. And I might say, following Judith Butler's own theory, that there is no such thing as a non-stylized. In other words, try to imagine the way someone walks as being neutral, not communicating any kind of information. What you're looking at here is a point light display something that is used often in the psychology of perception. And what I want to say here is a rather banal but important observation for someone like Judith Butler, which is that when most people are asked to describe this in a gendered way, even if these sequence of dots have no physical appearance, they don't have a body that I can see, they don't have a face, um, most people will identify this as a masculine way of walking. We can just, and, and Butler would think that that is significant, not because there is an essential way of walking that is either masculine or feminine, but it is hard to imagine a way of walking that isn't somehow interpreted as masculine and feminine in the world we live in, in which the spectrum of masculinity and femininity is so pervasive and influential. So when Butler says gender is a stylized repetition of acts through time, what does that through time matter? I mean, you to talk about it is that our way of walking is repeated over time such that it becomes part of us. So if Butler wants to say that this manner of walking feels gendered in a way, it's important that that gender expression is always has the possibility of changing because it is merely an act that feels natural perhaps to, to a person but is not essential in the sense that it cannot change the possibility of change is very important for judith butler that's why one of the reasons she's so insistent upon thinking about gender as something that is akin to a verb rather than a noun
So important yung last line. No? Actually, important yung the entire thing. Pero important din, I mean, to to encapsulate what what the entire slide is all about. Somehow, when we think of gender as performative, again, it's not performance, but performative. Butler also makes a distinction between for performance and performative. So we can just look for it. No? Important here is that the idea or the encapsulation that probably gender is not a noun, but a verb. So it emphasizes on the fluidity of that concept itself. The idea is it's a flux. It's fluid. It is constantly changing. So that's why I mentioned ko kanina that gender could be, some philosophers would argue, is ontological or would emphasize that there is no ontological basis for gender except for change. So then that's the that's the more philosophical way of saying it. No? Pero yung idea of stylized, hindi ibig sabihin na sinadyang style. Eh? Kasi minsan inisip natin na stylized is something that we do to present ourselves in relation to gender in a way when we do something or when we act, it already is a presupposition of my identity. And we and if we do it constantly through time, it is who we are. Yun yung part ng ng, ano, ng, ng concepto of true time. So therefore, whether you're intentionally doing it or not intentionally doing it, the fact that you act on it across time it is an impression of who you are. So if this was uh, my class, sabihin nyo, sabihin, sabihin ko, oh, raise your hand if you understand, pero I cannot ask that because this is a podcast. Tapos siguro lang to further explain here, yung dots na nakikita nyo here, ang sinasabi niya rin is that when you look at this movement, technically there is no face, no body, no color. What you're seeing on the screen is just dots. However, if you want, if you ask anyone, or at least a general observation or assessment of this, probably people will say, if if tinanong natin anong gender ng galaw na yan or ng movement na yan, that many would assign, quote unquote, assign this act as masculine. And to think we don't have a figure here. When I say figure, there is no face, no body, no lines, it's just dots. Denotatively, we're saying that it's just that's moving dots. And yet, we have an inclination to say, this is someone walking, and that person walking is masculine. So, and damning here, because when we talk about, so what is masculine? Probably, some people, will, some people will say, that that's masculine. And yet, when we try to uncover the distinction of masculine and feminine, where is that emanating from? Kaya yun yung medyo difficult with the concept of perform per performativity in the sense na it talks about a stylization which happens through time and it doesn't presuppose a standard. It just says that there is an understanding of what is masculine and what is feminine. There is an engendered conception on the way we act. I hope you you get an understanding of what, what we're saying or or what Butler is saying. No? I want to clean the idea that gen uh, that photography is also performative in the sense that your conception of what is photography would probably be based on the conventions that you are aware of. Ano yung sabihin nun? If you are a photojournalist, you have a bias to unto the understanding of photography as a truth-telling medium. Kung photojournalist ka, you would believe that that photography has the capacity to tell the truth. Or else, why do documentary photography, why do photojournalism if people will say that what they're shooting is untrue? Diba? The basis of what you do as a documentary photographer or a photojournalist or even a forensic photographer or a scientific photographer is that there is a claim that a photograph is evidentiary. It is a proof of a fact, kaya nga siya, ano, kaya nga ginagamit natin yan sa investigation, in scientific methods, in, in, ano, in, in criminal law, we can use it as an evidence. Because the assumption is, a photograph can tell the truth. So yung the performativity of photography in that field of documentary photography justifies the definition of photography itself. That Photography, since you're using it to tell the truth, 
you would assume that photography is truth telling. Now, when you go to you know, to some discussions of photography in passion photography, when you think of passion photography, again, this is a genre, uh, no, genre of photography. When you go there, you could, since, since your entire paradigm is that photography has an aspect that is aesthetic, and that aesthetic aspect of photography enables you to express and ultimately probably sell a fashion item to the world, then therefore, built into your idea of what is photography is that it has aesthetic value, but it also has economic value. Diba? So embedded in your idea of photography as a passion photographer is that it has aesthetic value and it also has commercial value. Or else, why do fashion photography? Diba? Yun yung mga embedded idea. So what we're seeing here is that photography in itself is performative. Whatever you think of photography is based on your encounter with photography. And that encounter with photography performs a definition of photography. So medyo complicated, but I hope you, you get uh, got an idea. No? Um, so just an illustration. In my experience in giving talks or these presentations, iba ang lingua. When you go to the marketplace, the camera clubs, genre photography or popular photography, iba yung lingua. And when you go to the gallery, the language is also different. May common terms, but magkaiba. And that was also emphasized or at least demonstrated when we had a roundtable discussion of what is Philippine photography, or at least we tried to describe or characterize what is Philippine photography. These, these people in, 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 in the photo, we came from different fields in relation to photography. Halo-halo yung concepts namin of photography. We have common terms, and yet it was really, really different. Are we saying that we encourage na maging uniform? Not necessarily, but we're just emphasizing a character of photography that is also, that is all, it is also performative in the sense that what we think of what is photography, the essence of photography, will probably be defined by our stylized encounters with photography itself. So, yeah, so that, that is the idea. So in this case, we were just laughing Parang I, I, I always describe this as similar to the Mino. We're, in, we're discussing about philosophy. What is philosophy? What is virtue? And then at the end, natawa na lang sila kasi nga walang final definition. And yet, they lack in the sense that the conclusion is that the product of conversing about philosophy, the product of philosophy is the, pra the exercise itself. Diba? So the exercise of philosophy is what justifies philosophy. And in photography, similarly, what justifies photography? The act of photography itself. So yun yung sinasabi natin na performative. That the, that, that the justification for a topic or a discourse is the syntax to which it is demonstrated. So yun yun. But at least may idea naman, no? I hope. Na, at least nakakita niyang idea. I will try to demonstrate it further as we go along.